you know, there's the running back situation, not having, uh, you know, Tony, we did get Rico signed back, but, uh, you know, we've got a bunch of good young offensive linemen that we feel good about, and it's time for those guys to step up, and, you know, but overall, we feel uh, pretty good. We thought the Kendricks deal was big for us in terms of, you know, having someone in there with Layton, but we also mm-hmm. got Overshone coming back, and uh, feel really good about where he was before he got hurt. And so overall, I'd say we feel good, but we're always, you know, that's has been our modus is look for things that are efficient for our roster. Yeah, so, so at this point, you don't feel this. There is more. You always want to hit on the, your first three draft picks. But sure. It's not a more just kind of where you are in roster construction now. Is there going to be even more of a premium? placed on those early picks in the draft as far as needing them to contribute early? Yeah, but I think the draft aligns, you know, a little bit with our needs. I mean, you know, I think the deepest position in this draft is offensive line. So, you know, you're always – every year you're wanting to bring young guys, uh, you know, into the fold in terms of your Mm -hmm. offensive line depth and, you know, how we work that. I think that aligns very well with us. But, uh, you know, we're – you know, I think we've always – that Will and uh, you know and Alex uh, Loomis, you know they've done a good job of always looking for things that would uh, make sense for us. Mm-hmm. Sit out on that fourth round pick. Do you feel like if there's a good trade back scenario for you guys, you'd be interested? In the you know, it's you know you got to play option quarterback when the draft comes around. I mean, you're kind of seeing how things fall. We're early too, you know, in terms of what our board's going to look like. I mean, we don't have our board up yet. And, you know, we've got a feel for the areas where guys should end up. Uh, but overall, I think, you know, especially as you move in the draft and we're late in the first round, I mean, you really don't see those opportunities till, uh, you know, the first half of the board, go, you know, it'll come off. And then uh, we'll see where we sit. So you don't see yourself having more needs to fill this year because of your cap situation and your, your lack of activity and free agency compared to the past year? I didn't, you know, we've never been real active in free agency. Right, but you, you've you done know, a lot we've, stuff we've d- yeah. done things, and we're not through. You know, we'll see where uh, where we end up on some of these things in terms of, uh, uh, you know, in terms of what makes sense for us as we see what players um, might be available out there, and uh, if they make sense for us. And as we all know, this free agency thing seems to be condensed every year. More and more guys seem seems to be one big. Mm-hmm you know, run in the first, you know, three to five days. And then, you know, as you've seen lately, there's not a lot of activity out there. But, you know, sometimes guys just have to get their hands around where they want to be and, you know, what their financial situation is based on, uh, you know, how the market's working out. You mentioned that offensive line class, Tyler Smith, how much flexibility does he got to give you going into the draft? And I'm sure there wouldn't be a final decision on where he would be positionally yeah. until after the draft, correct? That, that's probably correct. I mean, at the end of the day, versatility is a huge thing. And anytime you've got a player like uh, Tyler, uh, who can, who's shown that he can play at a high level at tackle or guard, uh, you know, that brings versatility. And uh, like I said, we you know, have some young guys there like a TJ Bass, uh, you know, that really stepped up and played – uh, well for us last year we're you know looking forward to a full off season with uh well let's go again and uh seeing what awesome richards does and we'll have ball back in the mix again and you know see how these guys uh uh you know pan out as we uh work into the off season but feel really good about them and uh you know at the same time i'm sure we'll because of the depth at that position uh probably a pretty good chance uh you know, that we take an offensive lineman pretty high in this draft. And that factors in when you're looking at your all-season approach with your veterans too, right? I mean, there were a lot of no considerations question. on tiring, but you knew this was a deep draft and how it set up and where you were. No question. And, uh, you know, like I said, no one thinks more Tyron Smith than uh, Jerry, myself, the organization. I mean, I think he's the first ballot Hall of Famer, but he's he's played, you know, he's been in the league a long time. And, you know, I'm happy for him that he got a – you know, a great uh, offer to continue to play, and we respect that. But, uh, you know, at some point you do have to make some tough decisions in, in, in terms of how we move forward. Talk about wanting to defend the run a little bit better this offseason, bring in Eric Hendricks. How much does that help? And then also do you feel like you still need help at defensive tackle? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, another year, uh, you know, with Mozzie, I know Zim's looking forward to working with him. 
uh, you know, I, I just think Mozzie's going to step up and be a really good football player. But we also know that, uh, you know, Hankins was a good fit for us two years in a row. And, you know, there's usually, you know, big defensive tackles out there that uh, you can pick up. I know the Eagles picked up a couple a couple years ago, uh, you know, late in the game. And, uh, you know, just feel like uh, there's going to be some opportunities there uh, at that position as well. Uh, you know, to add something, you know, to add some depth and some competition for camp. Speaking of uh, defense, Jerry keeps talking about different alignment, different structure. Can you, what can you share with us about how differently you guys plan to play defensively that could help y'all get some Yeah, I mean, it's going to evolve. I mean, we need to let Zim, you know, get his hands around what our personnel is and, you know, how he wants to go about it. He's been, uh, you know, he's been out of the game two years, but he's been studying the game for two years. <laughs> Dan was out of the game for a year, and he came back and played defense in a completely different way than he was doing it uh, at Atlanta. I mean, you, you observe and you see what people are doing that works. But, uh, you know, I, I do think in general Zim's philosophy is, uh, you know, he's going to play with bigger guys. Uh, you know, we played with uh, three safeties and two linebackers, and I think Zim's, you know, from everything we can see right now, he's – Looks to play more with, you know, at three least backers. in the run down, you know, first, second down uh, scenarios, playing with three linebackers. So, uh, you know, that's a change. Uh, but, uh, you know, and I know, you know, in general, uh, you know, he's big, big, big on stopping the run. Not that ever, not that Dan Quinn didn't either. I mean, everybody wants to stop the run. But, you know, in terms of how you're prioritizing and doing things that give you an opportunity. Uh, to achieve what you want to be as a defensive unit, some people philosophically are a little, a little different in how they go about it. And not that one's righter than the other. It's just uh, what they do well and uh, how they've had success in the past and how they feel like they can have success going forward. You mentioned Overshone earlier. Who are some of the and Mozzie? Who are some of the guys in their first or second year, kind of in that yeah. position, that make you comfortable? with the relative lack of activity in free agency. Well, I, you know, a guy like Schoonmaker, I think, is going to uh, step up, and he's only going to keep getting better. Uh, another tight end, John Stevens, who we really liked, uh, you know, before he got hurt in the preseason. Um, so, you know, these things just evolve. Young players come around, and, uh, you know, we've got a good group of guys here on the practice squad last year. Uh, you know, Wanye Thomas was one of those guys the year before who then stepped up and played a big role on defense. I mean, there's, you know, a group of players that will have, uh, you know, that'll have their chance to step up and, and and make a difference. I mean, you got young guys who didn't play a lot. A guy at receiver like uh, Brooks, when you may be looking at losing a guy like Gallup, uh, can step up. Obviously, Tolbert made a big jump last year and think he's going to continue to get better uh, in terms of what we've seen out of him. So... You know, we just feel like, uh, you know, overall that we've got a really strong roster. Uh, we feel like we'll obviously supplement that with the draft. And as I said, I still think we'll be uh, signing some veteran football players that uh, will ultimately help us out. Running back, is, that, is, is the draft lineup for you there? Yeah, I think there's uh, players at all levels uh, in the draft. And, uh, you know, wherever that, you know, makes the most sense and brings the most value and, you know, value compared to what at, at another position. But, uh, you know, Mike, uh, you know, very comfortable. Him and Shadi are very comfortable, uh, you know, that we can, uh, you know, find running backs that can uh, have success here. We've done it in the past. We brought a veteran in in McFadden one year, and uh, I think he ran for 1,100, 1,200 yards. So, you know, the running back position, as we all know, uh, you know, you can find really good backs. Uh, you know, and you put them in a good situation, they can have success. Uh, Gilmore's a quality guy. Cut the shoulder injuries, that kind of holding up things for not just you, but everybody right now as he works through that. You know, I can't comment on what anyone else thinks. I just know we think a, you know, a whole lot of Stefan, obviously, uh, you know, with Bland stepping up and us re-signing J. Lou and, uh, of course, having Diggs coming off that injury. I mean, there's another really – you know, a great football player that we're allocating a lot of our cap resources to that uh, barely, you know, didn't play much last year. And here we're going to have him back ready to go. So, you know, it's just having to pick and choose uh, where you want to use your uh, resources. Stefan was, I, I mean, not only was he really good for us on the field, but, you know, I'd say a better guy off the field in terms of 
uh, how he goes about his business being a pro, uh, you know, helping the young guys in the room. So, you know, look forward to him. Uh, you know, I hope things go well for him. And, you know, he, he was nothing but, you know, s- very, uh, you know, productive for us. And we don't ever rule that out either. Well, Jonathan Brooks, the guy, obviously draft can go anyway, but he's a guy that Dan Cooper's done his surgery. How much does that help you guys get some information on him? Does that give me the advantage of other teams uh, – Running back out of Texas. Yeah, I mean, we always, uh, you know, it always helps when one of the doctors you're very, very familiar with does the surgery. So uh, that'll be very helpful. Obviously, he's a guy we follow right in our backyard here in Texas. And, you know, he's a very, uh, you know, he's got a lot of skill sets. And uh, you know, probably if it wasn't for the injury, might, you know, might would have ultimately been rated the best back in the draft. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, anytime a back's coming off an injury, then you have to take those things into account. Okay. Is that a fear factor? I mean, you know, obviously you want, you're looking for a back to come in and play now. Does mm-hmm. coming off ACL, that kind of, is a fear factor, like that's something that you can't. You know, backs come, you know, especially, you know, what was done, you know, he'll be, our understanding, we're not there yet. We hadn't done the full body of work. Right. We all got to realize here, we hadn't even started our, you know, our intense draft meetings. Right. Obviously our right. scouts and Will yeah. and them have done a ton of work and mm-hmm. they're getting prepared to, you know, have Mike and his staff and Jerry and I and our personnel group all get in a room and really grind these guys out. But, uh, you know, our understanding is that uh, he has a great chance to be ready to, you know, not miss anything, start training camp okay. and go to work. Yeah, but man. we'll we'll see. I don't want to yeah, 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 yeah. preempt anything. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't seen the medical right, reports, right. but just from a, you know, periphery basis right. uh, from afar, uh, you know, going to the combine and, and things like that, I think he's – you know, could be a player who, you know, has the potential to really start first day of training camp. I mean, not start, but well, yeah, 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 participate yeah, sure. right away. Right. Part of, yeah. Yeah. Given the needs, do you still feel like there is an opportunity to take the best player available in the first round? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, I mean, we feel, you know, we feel really good about our roster as it sits. I know you say, well, you've lost some quality guys when you lose a, a Pollard and an Armstrong and, uh, you know, a Biotic, and, you know, those are quality football players that uh, uh, Tyron Smith, I mean, we understand that. But, uh, you know, at the same time, that's unfortunately what happens, you know, in a salary cap era. That, uh, you know, you, sometimes you can't just uh, keep everybody. And we do have young players like in Dorrance's case. We've got a Sam Williams and, you know, guys like that, a Fajoko who we drafted you know, mid-round that are ready to play and need more play time. And would tell you, and probably even a Dan would have told you, we didn't get Sam enough snaps last year. But it's hard when you got the Fowlers and you got the uh, Dorrances to, you know, those guys are a little bit ahead of them and they're young up-and-comers. But all of a sudden you give them the chance and they may be more productive than what was in front of them, which is given the opportunity. Obviously, we think a lot of Sam. And Dorrance did once uh, Randy left. So... You know, Foucault. these things happen. Well, of the guy that danced it on the table for and draft day. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, our scouting department loved him, too. So, you know, we've got young guys who are, who are coming that need opportunities. thing is, you've never taken a, used a second-round pick on a player who has an injury that drops lower than what he normally We've never do, done that, have we? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry doesn't have that DNA in him to, to take a chance, take a risk. <laughs> Y'all good? Yeah.